This is the Fuji Film X-T4. The entire setup that you're looking at here cost me just over $2,500. And let me tell you, this camera shoots amazing pictures. But so does my iPhone, right? I mean, just look at all these YouTubers trying to compare an expensive camera with a smartphone. And some even claim that the smartphones have replaced their cameras for most purposes. So this made me wonder, is there really a difference between shooting on an iPhone and an expensive camera? So I've made an Instagram poll a couple of days ago, asking people if they can tell which of these two images is shot on the iPhone. And surprise, surprise, most people couldn't tell the difference. In fact, half of the people who took the poll said that they were just guessing. Therefore, I've decided to make this video. Hey friends, welcome back. It's so good to see you again. So let me make this very clear. I will not be comparing these on an even ground. In fact, I'm gonna do things a little different to see the differences in the shooting experience, the image quality, and also the convenience. I'm gonna dumb down the Fujifilm to make it as simple as possible. And also try my best to replicate the point and shoot approach of the iPhone on the Fujifilm. So I'm gonna set all the controls to automatic. The only thing that I'll be controlling manually is the exposure using this dial on the front. This will be an equivalent to the exposure slider on the iPhone and most smartphones. I'll also be shooting all of the images in JPEG because if I did shoot RAW, the Fujifilm is just gonna make the iPhone run circles around it. And also RAW images are much more of a hassle to work with compared to a JPEG. I've also switched the focus to automatic, which means the camera decides where to focus. If in case I want to manually focus on a particular subject, I just tap to focus just like the iPhone. And I've also took off the battery grip because just look at the freaking thing with the battery grip on. And finally, I'm just gonna stick to one lens, the 16 to 80 mm to keep things as simple as possible. Now that all the photographers watching this video hate me for basically crippling the crap out of this camera, let's get started. And also, please subscribe if you're enjoying this video, as I'm gonna be making a lot more of these videos in the future. If you're comparing the straight out of the camera images from both the devices and completely ignore the shooting and the editing experience, then yes, the iPhones do a great job at clicking amazing pictures. But the second you take the shooting and the editing process into consideration, you'll be clearly able to see why the Fujifilm costs so much. Fun fact, this lens alone costs more than the iPhone 11 itself. In fact, you can buy an iPhone 11 128 GB variant and also buy a pair of AirPods and still have some cash in hand. Yeah, this is an expensive camera. So in this video, we'll be talking about what it is like to shoot on both of these. We'll also be comparing the image quality and also be talking about how convenient is it to shoot with each of these devices. So please feel free to navigate around however you like. Even without all the extra attachments, the Fujifilm is comparatively a lot heavier than the iPhone. You can definitely feel the weight after shooting a while with the Fuji. If you're shooting very low to the ground or very high up above, the iPhone screen is pretty much not visible and you really can't see what you're shooting. The Fuji, however, has a flip-out screen and that lets you see what you're shooting in a wide range of shooting situations. A huge advantage that the Fujifilm has is its EVF. You never realize how great shooting through an EVF can be until you shoot with one. There is something about peeking through the EVF to compose your shot that is much more immersive in my opinion. The iPhone 11 has two cameras, a 13mm ultra-wide and a 26mm wide which is the main camera. The pro variants of the iPhones have a 56mm telephoto lens as well. But for this comparison, we'll only be using the main camera with the 26mm lens, as this is the camera that's gonna provide the highest image quality. This is a nice range of focal lengths to have, as you can shoot everything from landscapes to close-up portraits. Speaking of portraits, let's talk about the portrait mode on the iPhone. Here's an image shot with portrait mode on the iPhone using the main camera. Now, let's look at the same image shot on the Fujifilm. To my eyes, the iPhone's image almost looks wrong. Well, it's not entirely the iPhone's fault. The focal range of 26mm is not the best focal range to be shooting close-up portraits. The telephoto lens would be a much nicer option in this instance. Uh, if you don't have a telephoto lens on your phone, here's a photography hack for you. Open the main camera on your phone, digitally zoom into 2 or 2.5x. 
you might have to step back a little from the subject in order to fit the whole subject in the frame. Now adjust and frame the subject and click the image. As you can see, this image looks much better than the one we've shot with the wide angle lens. So if we compare this image to the Fuji's image shot at 80mm, we can see that though the iPhone's image has improved, the Fuji's image looks better with nicer background and plenty of detail. The second you import both the files into your editing software or your computer, the first thing that you immediately notice is the file size. A JPEG from the Fuji film uses about 10 to 15 MB on average, while the iPhone's JPEG take about 1 to 3 MB. You might be thinking, that's great, right? The iPhone is giving you amazing image quality for one tenth of the file size. Well, it depends on who you ask. For most users who don't edit their pictures a lot, this would be great because you're saving a lot of space. But you don't have to be a professional photographer to see that the smaller file size is because there are a lot of compromises being made. The Fujifilm's JPEGs are not that large for no reason. They contain a lot more information in terms of resolution, the color information, also the dynamic range. The iPhone's cameras shoot a 12 megapixel JPEG, while the Fujifilm shoots a 24 megapixel JPEG. And this can be very clearly seen once you zoom in. There is a massive difference in the amount of detail present in both the files. The extra resolution on the Fujifilm can be really useful while cropping and recomposing the shot. And you can crop a lot more than the iPhone without significant loss in detail. Notice that I'm using the word detail here and not sharpness. Sharpness is extra processing that is applied to the images to make them look more detailed than they actually are. Whereas detail refers to the actual information present in the image. For instance, look at these two images. The iPhone's image actually looks much more sharper than the Fuji. But once again, if we zoom in, we can see the difference. The Fujifilm's file has tons more detail in shadows, midtones, and also the highlights. It doesn't add any extra sharpness compared to the iPhone's over-sharpened image. The amount of color information present in an image is called its bit depth. To see this, let's jump into Lightroom. Let's turn down the temperature and the tint slider all the way down and boost up the saturation to 100%. With these extreme adjustments, we can kind of see that the iPhone's image breaks apart, whereas the one from the Fuji holds up pretty well. This is because the Fuji's image contains way more color information than the iPhone's image. Dynamic range is the amount of detail a camera can capture without making the highlights pure white and the shadows pure black. The iPhone lifts all the shadows and brings down all the highlights to give you a hyper-realistic HDR look. But there is not much information present in the deep shadows and the bright highlights. This can be clearly seen if you try to underexpose an image and boost the shadows in the editing process. For instance, with the Fuji's image, I can create a similarly hyper-realistic HDR looking image by boosting all the shadows and bringing down the highlights. There is actual data in shadows, midtones and highlights that lets me do this on the Fuji's image. Whereas the iPhone always gives you a strong HDR look. And if you want to make it look a bit more natural, you're not in much luck because there is very limited data for you to make those extreme changes without breaking the image. The iPhone does have a portrait mode that tries to replicate the smooth background blur that you see on expensive cameras. Again, if you take a closer look at the edges and compare that to the Fuji, the iPhone's portrait mode stands no chance. The edge detection is far from being perfect. It often gets confused between the subject and the background. Now jump to the Fuji's image, the edges are perfectly sharp and the background is much smoother. If we talk about colors, then the iPhone's flatten skin tones completely. It tries to boost the shadows to compensate for all the dark parts of the skin to make it look much nicer. Personally, I think this looks very plasticky and unnatural. This can be clearly seen once we take a look at the same image shot on the Fuji. There is much more depth in the colors and the highlight to shadow roll off gives a much more pleasant looking skin tone. If we're gonna talk about the colors that both of these devices produce, I think the iPhone does a great job for what it is. It almost always gets the white balance right. And for such a small sensor, it does a great job at keeping the whites white, the sky is blue, and the grass green, etc. All thanks to computational photography. Colors, in my opinion, are subjective. Some people prefer very bright and vibrant colors, while others prefer a more natural and subdued look. If you like bright, vibrant colors, then the iPhone will work great for you. But if you prefer natural, desaturated colors, then you'll have a 
tough time editing the iPhone's image to look that way. And you can almost achieve any kind of a look that you desire from the Fuji's image. I have to give credit to Fujifilm for their JPEG recipes and film simulations. Using the JPEG recipes, you can customize how your images look even before you click them. And their film simulations, which are based on their old film stocks, are just amazing. You can get an entirely different looking image with each of these film simulations. Both of the cameras perform great in bright outdoor situations, but in indoor and low light situations, I'm not gonna waste much of your time and just tell you that the Fuji is way, way better than the iPhone. Even with the night mode turned on, the Fuji's image looks much more cleaner with less noise compared to the iPhone. So far, I've been praising the Fuji for its amazing image output. There is, however, a huge con though. Okay, let's say you buy this camera and you're always gonna shoot in auto mode, which would be complete waste of money, but even if you did that, just taking the camera out of your bag and putting on the lens, removing the lens cap and shooting an image takes so much longer than just pulling out your iPhone, cleaning the lens and taking the shot. The Fuji is also much more of an inconvenience with the editing process. You have to take out the SD card, dump the files into your laptop and then import them into your editing software, edit them and export and at the end of the day, you'll be needing a phone anyway to upload those pictures to Instagram. Is it all worth the extra hassle? Well, it depends. Personally, I'm a sucker for detail and having lots of control of the image. So it is very much worth the extra inconvenience for me. But for most people, this is just unnecessary pain that they have to deal with. By the time you import the files to your computer and start editing, most people can shoot, edit and post the picture to their social media with their iPhone. So to sum everything up, if you're someone who doesn't care much about the image quality and editing your photos, yes, the iPhone is amazing and plenty good enough for most use cases. If you're the kind of a person who likes shooting images in the middle of your busy day and post them to social media, then yes, the iPhone is an amazing camera right in your pocket. But if you're the kind of a person who takes time out of your day specifically to shoot pictures, then the Fuji or any modern mirrorless camera for that matter would be a good investment. But guys, take all of this with a grain of salt. What matters the most is how good of a photographer you are. Things like storytelling, composition, lighting, and knowing your camera are way more important than which camera you shoot with. I've had many instances where people come and tell me that they love my images and automatically assume that it is because of the expensive camera. It's not the brush that paints a masterpiece, it's the artist. The brush is just a tool, like your camera. So if you think buying an expensive camera is gonna give you better looking images, I'd say that you're mistaken. I highly suggest that you spend a decent amount of time understanding the craft of photography, lighting and editing your pictures. Cause that will take you much farther than any expensive mirrorless camera. And that's it for today guys. If you like this kind of photography related content, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you found the video entertaining or informative, please subscribe. That'd be awesome. Until next time.